what we are able to achieve so far is able to achieve networking let me quickly talk and revise out the concept i'll try to cover more but we have uh, <laughs> vpcs let's get started here let's get started so what we do we have a region the slide would be available to you region would have the vpc vpc would have availability zones as we see into this particular place then we will create subnet subnet would be a logical isolation which i am creating as we can see into this particular picture subnet is where my machine and ec2 instances and all the component would be created so subnet is where everything would be created and i would start creating machines like abc and then other machines which is there cdef and maybe other machines if i need to so this whole thing would happen within a vpc when i want them to communicate to internet i may probably have a route table and that route table would have local entry only by default everyone gets connected to it then we would have a connection with igw see igw is still a regional entity so see this boundary region igw is still within a region within that region we are able to communicate to internet then we may create an internet route table which would have entry for local as well as internet for igw entry and then i would disconnect subnet association of public and associate it with my internet route table that's how we would ensure network connectivity now for my machines into private to go to external world, I would need a net gateway and that net gateway entry I would add into main route table so that I can communicate to outside world and get my application. So this is how we would create a network. Okay, now beyond it, we may also want to extend this network to my on premises. So it may be possible that you are into a process of migrating from on-prem to cloud or you already have some network in on-premises and you want to connect them and for that we would be needing some communication channel. So for that we will be creating something called a VPN gateway or in documentation we call it VGW virtual gateway. What is the use of a virtual gateway? That virtual gateway would be ensuring that we are able to send traffic out. So what we will do through this VPN gateway, we can create two type of connection using this VPN gateway. First communication channel which I can create is a direct connect. Direct connect is a way which is ensuring we are able to send everything into on-premises with a direct connect. This one is your private line. This is a private network connection. You work with your ISP and get this private connection. It is 110 100 Gbps and only you are using it. That is costlier, but it is considered to be much performant and much a predictable performance. So it is called direct connect. That is one way. If you can't afford the direct connect, which is very costly and maybe you do not have a use case for that, that time you can leverage internet and through internet your traffic can be sent to your VP, VP to your on-premises network and that will happen through a VPN network. So there are two ways for you to connect to your on-prem environment. One is through direct connect which is a dedicated connection only for you. And another one is establishing a VPN. So that time you would be utilizing. Is it like a lease line? Yes, Azam, it is. It is like a lease line, but only for your account. And probably you have to work with your uh, express route in Azure. I have no idea on that, Vishal, so I won't comment there. But yes, it is a direct communication channel which you can create if the need be. Right. So that's how we would expand. Now, what if I have to access some other services? So let me talk more on that. Give me a minute. I'll bring it up now. See this. What I may want to do, I may want to talk to some other AWS services also. What I mean by that, let me explain that. So if you see here, services which are within VPC are limited. They are easy to then there are uh, services like RDS, then there are load balancer, but there are a lot of services which are outside of my VPC. See, they are still within the region, but they are outside. So services like Amazon S3, services like Athena, CloudWatch, SageMaker, and many more, they all are outside of VPC. So what is communication pattern? These services right now have something called a public endpoint. So if they have a public endpoint, let's say this machine F has to talk or this machine H has to talk to S3 service here. So what the communication would happen? H would first go through net gateway. 
net gateway will forward traffic to internet gateway internet gateway will then access resources into public subnet and through this public subnet request will be coming to s3 do you see the complicated pattern we sometimes call it hair pinning which means unnecessarily your traffic has to go out and then come back in it doesn't make sense at all what we can do in that particular case we can use another component in amazon vpc that is called vpc endpoint so see this again this is a connection which i would create called vpc endpoint a component which i would create and when i have this endpoint created what it would allow me it would allow me to communicate to the services which are outside of vpc but within the same region so now if d has to talk to s3 communication would happen like this previously what was happening d was sending to net net was sending to internet internet was sending it back and it was coming to s3 we don't want that so once you have your vpn uh, sorry vpc endpoint every communication would happen internally and you don't have to worry about anything at all in that case so that is called a vpc endpoint so endpoints are a good way to ensure that we are able to provide connectivity from within the network itself without going outside to the external world that's what we call vpc endpoint right so hopefully everyone is understanding and following along now what what else what else can be done see this vpc i created is within one region region one what if, if there is a requirement and which says that hey you have to connect to another vpc maybe it is in different account maybe it is in different region altogether so we can connect to it no issues at all so we have region 2 we have vpc there it may have a machine let's say machine called j and they want to communicate with each other now what we can do in that case we can go ahead and have vpc peering connection so this vpc peering connection is a construct which we can create which would allow me to communicate to my external world as we see here to another vpc and in this case if you see i am not leveraging internet this traffic is all happening on amazon's own global network so there is no need to go to external world internally through amazon network we are able to communicate with each other should not be a problem at all so that is what vpc peering is and this vpc peering can happen across subnet it can happen sorry it can happen across region it can happen across account should not be a problem at all so it's a much easier way if you want to expand your network connect to different vpc in different account in different region and keep on expanding your network so that's where my vpc peering connection would work can't we use igw directly you can debashish but that time you are see igw is a two way igw is like if you are able to talk to external world external world can also talk to you but when you are using net what is going to happen let me explain see when machine a is sending traffic out that request is going through internet gateway and going forward here so somebody who is here would know that hey who requested because this machine here is getting a public ip address so public ip is available onto public subnet but when c would send a traffic c would send its a traffic to net and net will forward traffic to it now if this user gets the traffic it would respond and he or she will think that i am responding to net net would hide the internal mechanism so we are ensuring that we don't want to expose people to external world and we want to keep it internal let me explain by giving an example there where i live we have i'm talking about in very early days when covid lockdown started in london now we had a elderly couple living into our apartment buildings that couple is around 80 plus and obviously when the lockdown hit they were they were concerned about their own health they didn't want it to go out so what we did in our building we created a group and we asked this couple to say hey give us what you need from groceries we will go for you and get it for you so we started acting as a proxy for them we started acting as a net for them we take the list from them go to grocery shop get the shopping done and then deliver back to them grocery shop never knows who is actually we are shopping for and we are protecting them we can they can stay inside still getting their groceries same thing is happening here this machine c is getting internet but not directly but by net here and then 
it will be coming back like this so that's how we can protect our machine and that's why we would be using net net is chargeable Zeb. yes it is chargeable whenever a traffic is going out you are going to use it why we are kept net gateway in private Logeshwaran, if you keep net gateway in private how net would be able to talk to external world like I took a list from my neighbor that I will go for you in do shopping, but I myself is having COVID positive, so I can't go out. So keeping me in private would restrict net gateway itself to go to external world and we need to ensure net should have access to internet, then only they can go, otherwise they can't go. So net would be in public, otherwise it won't be able to access internet.